welcome to About Face Theatre presents Five Questions With, and today's guest, Mary Zimmerman. Mary is a writer and director who specialises in adaptations of classic stories of world literature for the stage. Her many acclaimed works include her Tony, Obi and Drama Desk award-winning version of Metamorphoses, as well as Journey to the West, The Arabian Nights, The Odyssey, The Notebooks of Leonardo da Vinci, and The Jungle Book, among others. <laughs> Her work has been produced at Chicago's Looking Glass Theatre, where she's an ensemble member, and at the Goodman Theatre, where she's an artistic associate, and in New York on Broadway, at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, and Manhattan Theatre Club, as well as at major regional theatres. Her published plays um, have led to hundreds of productions around the world each year, while she has also directed for the public theatres Shakespeare in the Park, and four operas for the Met in New York City. Mary, you're very welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so good to have you. Um, so Mary, we'll just dive right in. Uh, the first question is, what play or experience first got you into theater? You know, I've told this story a lot, but it is true. And I think it's kind of good. Um, mm -hmm. My parents were academics and spent a year when I was five and six years old in Cambridge in London, actually, the UK. And behind our house in Cambridge was a woods with the name of the Little Woods, which I think is a very English name. <laughs> and down the street was the Big Woods. Yeah. And, um, I used to, and this is kind of hard to imagine these days because I was only five or six. I used to spend all my time in those woods alone uh, to the extent that I had names for the trees and knew all these little paths and so forth. And it seemed very vast to me, though, in fact, it's, it's not. And mm -hmm. what I didn't know was that every year in the summer, or I'm not exactly sure, but there was a production of Midsummer Night's Dream in a clearing in those mm -hmm. woods. And I actually did come across rehearsal. And it was Ill Met by Moonlight Proud Titania was the scene. <laughs> and Oberon and, and Titania were arguing. And then Oberon took off. This is, you know, it was a rehearsal. They were in everyday clothes. Uh, it was in the daytime. Took off and ran in all these circles with his fairy retinue. And after a few circles, like three, he started laughing really hard, the actor. And he said, how, how, many, how many times do we go? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone started laughing and laughing and it all just sort of came to a halt. They found that so hilarious. And that is definitely my primal scene of theater. And it wasn't in the least that I thought they were real fairies or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It was in fact, the fact that they were not real fairies but that they were adults playing in that way which I'd never seen in my life. And then their laughter and the fun they were having and the kind of doubleness of it all and yeah. the seriousness of it all and yet the hilarity of it all. Mm -hmm. And um, family lore, I mean, I actually have, this story is backed up. I, I went and got my sister apparently and we came to watch it and believe it or not, the director chased us off, which I find <laughs> kind of um, unbelievable. And then we did go see the production eventually at night, but I think I fell asleep. You know, I didn't, all I remember from the production was the, the donkey's head, you know, that's kind of all I really remember and it being nighttime. But my mother took me to all kinds of things. She did also take me to a Christmas pageant with, um, it was Cinderella with the ugly sisters played by men. Yeah. And um, I remember that one of them went to the ball in a dress that lit up with Christmas lights. Yes. And that was very striking to me as well. So that was, that was very, very young. My mom really loved the theater and all the arts. Though mm. I grew up in Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska, you know, I had this kind of extraordinary experience of, of being in the UK for a couple of years too. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I love it. Magical. Okay, so, so Mary, an early influence is this magical production of um, uh, Midnight Midsummer Night's Dream in in the forest itself. Um, but um, but what's what's a great play that you love and why? Um, the first one that comes to mind, and I'm not even sure it's like the greatest play ever written, but the Shakespeare play that I know. I, first of all, I love Midsummer, um, but the Shakespeare play that I I uh, know the best honestly is measure for measure i've been mm -hmm. in it and i've directed it 
and it's the one I've seen the most. And I, I don't necessarily know that it's a, a great play, but it certainly has great scenes mm -hmm. and great lines and some great roles and a great forgiving nature. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I, I and, you know, I have a, this is the great play. You know, there's so there's so many and there's so many different forms of theater too. things that maybe aren't exactly plays <laughs> so much, but that are theatrical events that have been so striking. Um, I had a very big experience. I actually saw Peter Brooks Mahabharata at the Bouffe du Nord again wow. at a young age, you know, as a teenager, maybe early 20s. And that kind of epic scale the fact that it takes um, the, the fantastical elements, the spiritual elements of it, the bare bones staging using imagination, all of that was super, super influential on me, I'm sure, in ways I didn't even realize. Just the act of adaptation itself of a great classic world text, you know. Mm. So I might say that trilogy is great, but I, you know, I feel, I feel a little hesitant because I guess, I guess if I name a great one, it's implying that others are less great. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, by the way, it's all in the production, right? Mm -hmm. You can see a phenomenal production of an okay play and not experience it as an okay play. It was a phenomenal mm -hmm. evening. Mm -hmm. And the play isn't the thing that's on the page. That's, you know, we think of it as a blueprint, but I more think of it as an artifact. And mm -hmm. um, it's, it's like, uh, we used to play this game in my childhood. We would, believe it or not, this was considered fun. We would melt <laughs> uh, crayons, wax into a little tin. And then when it was hot, uh, plunge it into cold water and it would come up into these fantastic shapes. And that's what a script is. It's just that warm wax in the tin and you need every other element to make it great and to make it a great piece of theater. Otherwise, I guess it's a great piece of literature, you know, to read, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I, I guess I think of production as what makes something really great, you know, that's where it's meant to live. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Ooh, that's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> great. Um, so, can, Marie, can you tell us about a time in your theatrical life where, you know, something turned out in a way you didn't expect it to. Um, I'd have to think a little bit, and I'm sorry I'm not more prepared. Mm -hmm. I, I think in every process, something, lots of things should turn out not like, like you thought. Mm -hmm. um, if it turns out exactly as you expected, then why do the process, you know, why, why do it? I think you go into rehearsal with a lot of questions and a lot of, I have no idea how this one thing is going to happen and we have to figure it out. And this is a problem and I don't know what's gonna happen in it. And um, I don't know if you know this or not, but in the, the work that I write myself, I, I don't start with the script. The script doesn't exist before the process of rehearsal. So mm -hmm. I write every night, I go home and write the next days. It's not that I'm writing behind the actors. It's not that they improvise and I write it down. I'm one day ahead of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just who I cast becomes really instrumental in how it turns out because I write towards their, I hope, their talents and their abilities and so forth. Um, I do know that I can think of one great surprise, but I, it's a little bit long and complicated to explain, but I do have this show called The Notebooks of Leonardo da Vinci. And we designed this set, which was floor to ceiling um, cabinets out of which like one cabinet is a field, another folds down and it stairs, you know, they're little dioramas of things like all the props, all these millions of things. Um, and we had 16 long, narrow boxes that sat in a sort of, you know, were in a kind of square in that uh, one of those cabinets. And throughout the course of play, they were all removed. And then we also had this image from Leonardo's notebooks. There are two famous personal reminiscences. And one of them is about standing at the lip of a cave as a child and being afraid to move forward, but being unable to leave the mouth of the cave. I found that so compelling. And he dwells on it to the extent that he describes, like I had my right hand to my brow, my weight was on my left leg. You know, he, it's very, very precise. And we kept repeating that um, in both Italian and English 
throughout the play and kind of enacting it. And then I realized at the end, the actor who's sort of demonstrating it in the background could step into that box and disappear. And it very much became an image of, a final image of his death, of um, going into the mystery that he'd been examining his entire life. So that was really unexpected, but it was also, uh, you know, I'm gonna say planted by the unconscious, you know, I, which I believe in kind of really strongly that suddenly the cave was there in the set that we, I had in no way, in no way uh, figured that out or presaged that, you know, I, I had not thought of that. Um, and there's a million things like that. And, you know, we all feel it in the room when something like that happens, when it coheres, right? Mm -hmm. When you're all concentrating, um, there's a kind of power that comes into the room that steers you into new discoveries, but they fit, you know, the little jigsaw puzzle fits. I think we all, we're all in it for that partly, you know. <laughs> Those moments are so miraculous feeling, you know, so that's one. They all turn out different, you know, they, they kind of should, I think. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, but that's a great illustration. That's lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. So, um, okay. So Mary, so you've had this, already this amazing career in the theater. So what is it that keeps you coming back to the theater? What moves you, what excites you about the theater? Um, about, I think you could answer differently about going and seeing it and about making it. About making it, honestly, it's moments like I just described, but also I'm very, very intrigued by solving little problems and little structural problems, little problems of the image, little problems of the acting, and that, that kind of, I love those, like, we're not getting this laugh. We're not getting this laugh. How, why not? Okay, look at her first, then look at, just in trying every possible, <laughs> every possible combination and then hitting it, you know? I believe in those kind of, um, I believe there are some structures, you know, the, the, the work and that are good in storytelling or good in getting a laugh or whatever. And I, I feel like, um, solving them or coming across them. It's super rewarding. It's like equa a kind of equation, but the equation is an equation of emotion, you know, how, or meaning, how, how is that meaning made? How is that feeling attained? And it's so much different if you're two feet to the right or to the left or upstage or downstage, or you hold too long, or you don't, you know, or, or not enough. I mean, I, I, I kind of love all that. And I, I also think what drives me is, is just uh, manifesting these texts and these stories, which so obsessed me in childhood and still obsessed me and just making them manifest. So in terms of process that, in terms of going, you know, it's marvel. I mean, you want to see the marvelous and you, that, that liminal position you're in of it's real, but it's not. And you know, you know both those things and you hold both those things. I, I love that. And the surprises, ingenuity, like, um, oh, look, now it's a boat. You know what I mean? I, we, we love that. It's, it's a, it tickles us so much to make something be multiple things at once or transform. And even in the most realistic play, that's happening on the level of the performer. Even in the most naturalistic play, there's that double, doubleness because we know that person is not Hamlet or Lear or whoever. Um, but we're tickled by the, the dual nature and all of us melding our minds together to agree to go along with the ride. And that's something that's really intimate. It's a really intimate act actually. Mm -hmm. So it's all of that, you know, it's all that stuff. I, I really, even though I don't really practice in naturalism very much, except ex weirdly in opera, which isn't a naturalistic form, but I just mean <laughs> the types of operas I've done. Um, I, I love natural, I love it when I, you know, really superbly done extreme good acting on just a living room set does actually do it for me. It really does just as much as beautiful music and movement filled spectacles and poetic lang poetic um, language, by which I don't mean spoken language. I mean, visual metaphor and presentational quality and all of that. I, I really do like a lot of it. It's a big tent performance in theater. You know, it is. My father's house, there are many mansions. I mean, mm -hmm. there really are a whole mm -hmm. lot of 
different approaches. And for some reason, they're all satisfying. They, they share an element of, of uniting us in an imaginative act, you know, which I think is an, intim is an intimacy. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. So how about um, any skills from theater that you have found useful in, in the rest of your life? You know, um, being a director, you're kind of jack of all trades. And mm -hmm. I like that about it. Um, you know, hopefully you have a very developed visual sense and a good taste and all of that kind of thing and a good storyteller. But there's also the whole... Um, working with people all the time. And I would say that my own um, biggest learning curve is working with people. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I almost think it's like my karma that I should be in theater because, um, you know, I just, I just, uh, when I started out, I was impatient and had fits and not necessarily at people, but, you know, I was reactive and, um, you know, stressed and, 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 you know, just in a, in a frenzy all the time. And, and there are reasons for that. It is, it is, you do care about it and it is very difficult and is very pressured, but learning how different individuals respond, like what, what's the best way to speak to different people and that it's different mm -hmm. and that actors need, um, different approaches in the way you speak to them. Some hardly need anything, some need a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Some need pure technical suggestions. Some want to talk about, you know, on a deeper level, everything. The kind of patience of letting it like not be that great for quite a while, <laughs> like it's not great. It's not good, it's not good, it's not, oh, it's starting to get better, you know? Um, all of that, I think, I hope, I hope has spilled over a bit into my ordinary non-stage life in terms of just, um, you know, being patient and non-reactive and seeing things from multiple points of view, which is what kind of drama is all about. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would guess I would say that. I would say it's, it was my, my weakest when I, when I started. I knew all about the story. I had all million ideas how to stage it. But I, I wasn't as savvy about how, how human beings are, <laughs> including <laughs> myself, you know, I, I just wasn't that savvy. So I had to learn that. I had to learn it. Yeah. Great skill. Well, Mary, this has been so fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. Bonus question. Can we ask you anything about what you're working on at the moment? You know, um, I'm about to, in October, uh, I, 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 I direct this new opera called Eurydice based on Sarah Rule's play Eurydice with libretto by Sarah Rule. Comp the composition is Matt O'Coin and we did it in LA right before the shutdown. And it was a co-production with the Met. So I'm going to the Met in the fall to do that there. But coincidentally, cause we talked about it um, in the winter or spring, it's a little in flux cause of everything. I am doing uh, my notebooks with Leonardo da Vinci, which is one of, it is my oldest public piece, I think. I think it's the first thing I did off campus. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then it was revived a few times, but not in 20 years. So that that's coming up after, after the Met thing. Exciting. How exciting. How exciting to, yeah. to return to work that, you know. That yeah, you're, I mean, I'm hoping it still feels good <laughs> fresh <laughs> and interesting you know i'm hoping we'll see yeah, yeah. Well, you can you can always talk to the writer <laughs> yeah i know yeah <laughs> she doesn't listen though <laughs> <laughs> oh, well thank you so much thank Mary. you thanks for having me yeah our pleasure and thank you to you the audience for joining us if you enjoyed the interview please like below and share uh and follow about face um because we believe uh, theater makes life better. So see you next time on About Face Theater presents five questions with. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and share. Thanks for watching.